said we could save money for Kira's college fund by growing our own food? Uh-huh. Well, crops are in. <laughs> well, that is amazing. Mm. You spent months planting and weeding and fertilizing, and next thing you know, you've, you've almost got a carrot. <laughs> Good morning, neighbors. So, Kira, are you ready to hit them all? Yeah, but before we go, I need you to sign this permission slip for a school field trip. Sure. This is to get your navel pierced. Cool, I thought we were going to the science center. All right. Man, I gotta start reading those things. Okay, I'm gonna go up and change, then we'll go. Why don't you just wear that? My old gardening shirt? Uh -huh. oh, shoot. I've patched this thing a hundred times. Only wear it to scare the crows away. I never thought I'd say this, but what you're wearing is actually cool. Mm -hmm. Wait, are you saying I'm cool? I'm saying your shirt is cool. Kira's right. Patchwork is the new silk. I want to be cool. I wish I'd save my old rags and patch them onto a shirt. I'll give you $20 for that shirt. Oh, don't be ridiculous, Barbara Jean. I'm not going to sell you the shirt off my back. Okay, I get it. 30. No way. 40. 60. 65. So, yeah! <laughs> Planted in the past Though my life is changing fast Who I am is who I want to be A single mom who works too hard Who loves her kids and never stops With gentle hands and the heart of a fighter I'm a survivor What you doing? Oh, you look beautiful. I bet you're in a good mood. I got you a fudge-covered apple. <laughs> wow, this looks like an apology apple. What'd you do? Nothing. Yet. Hey, you know how when we're going somewhere and you get all mad because you're waiting for me because I'm doing my hair? Mm -hmm. Well, those days are over. Because all the guys in the football team are shaving their heads. You want to shave your head? If that's what it takes to make you happy. Forget it, Dan. You know how I freaked when you got that perm? Which... We don't talk about the perm. Look, it's for work. And if I don't do it because my wife won't let me, all the guys will make fun of me. This isn't like high school Tawny, okay? They're pro football players. They're clever. Mom, Van wants to shave his head. For business purposes. Why don't you practice by mowing the lawn? I absolutely forbid you to do this. End of discussion. But all the guys are doing it. I can't be the only one with soft, wavy brown hair. Well, whatever you do, don't get another one of those perms. <laughs> so, Reba, I got good news. What, Brock came to his senses about quitting his job to play golf? I have not come to my senses, Reba, and I never will. So, you remember that shirt that you sold me? No refund. No, I showed it to a friend who took it to a guy that he works with, and he said that he thinks he could sell those shirts. We're gonna be rich! Sure, we're gonna be rich. And Brock's gonna be Tiger Woods at the Fat Chance Desert Classic. <laughs> Reba, I'm serious. We should do this. You know, a lot of people make money selling things they make. And a lot of people lose money by selling things they make. Yeah, but you don't hear about those people. <laughs> well, maybe you got a point. Maybe you'll be one of the lucky ones. So, um, you don't mind if I kind of take this and run with it? Hmm. Barbara Jean, you can run with this idea. You can run with scissors. You can run with the bad crowd, just so long as you run. <laughs> Does everyone else's? Jeez. So it's okay to do something just because everyone else is doing it? Yeah. <laughs> to be cool. Thanks. Hey, Jakey, where are you going? Graveyard. 
Hi, honey. You look really pretty. I know, but you're still not shaving your head. Why do we always have to fight about stuff, huh? I mean, I think the world would be a better place if people with opposing views would just agree. <laughs> oh, very mature. Listen, what I'm trying to say is, like, cut it out. Ah, uh, the round table. <laughs> Kira, don't you think Van would look stupid if he shaved his head? Yes, but are we going to list all the ways that he would look stupid? Because I've only got a few years until college. <laughs> Look, everybody's doing it to show unity, all right? Oh. To show we're all on the same team. Oh, geez. If only there were a way to do that with matchy jerseys. I can't talk to you. Van, do you mind if I speak for you? Yeah? No? I don't know. What? Van's trying to say that playing on a team involves complex group dynamics, and seemingly self-destructive acts are actually initiation rites to foster camaraderie. Did I just say that? <laughs> Look, I know it's dumb. So what? It was dumb when my high school team dressed in drag on game days. You didn't say anything about that then. Huh. That's the first time I heard those were game days. <laughs> Look, this is important to me, okay? Right now, I'm the new guy. Rookie. I just want to feel like I belong. But I don't want you to do it. Why not? Just because. Well, that's not good enough. Well, it used to be. You don't even care what I think. You just want me to agree with the decision that you've already made. Yes. Thank you for understanding. <laughs> you know what? Do whatever you want. I don't care. You are the prettiest on game days. <laughs> I thought so, too. Good news, Reba. I shot a two under par. I hit a seven iron on 18, tap in for birdie. Oh, that's terrific, Brock. Go in the kitchen and get yourself a cookie. <laughs> oh, good, Brock, you're here. I have excellent news. Can it top how Brock killed seven birdies with his 18 wood? <laughs> well, good job, honey. Uh, and I bet you're gonna be proud of me, too. Three hundred dollars. I sold the shirt. That buyer loved them so much, he ordered a hundred of them to sell in his stores all over town. This is just the deposit. That's great, honey. Isn't that great, Reba? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And he said that this is just the first order. He said that he can see all of Houston wearing these shirts. And after that, all of Texas. And after that, he didn't say. <laughs> But if he did, I bet he would have said America. Wow, this is just like me with golf. Yeah, except I got a big fat check. No, I, I meant you have a lot of potential. Oh, I do. And I have a big fat check. Wow, this is something. So that guy said that my shirts could sell like that? Well, you know, he didn't mention you, but yes. Wow, that's great. So fork over my $150. Why would I do that? Because it's my shirt. My design is the hip new thing. <laughs> Who knew? Well, not you. <laughs> and uh, it wasn't so much your design he bought as my salesmanship. Oh. Well, does he want a hundred of your salesmanship or a hundred of my design? You know, the way I see it, you guys did this together. We really did it. <laughs> I recognized the potential of the shirt, and Reba didn't want any part of it. She told me to run with it. And I did. Me. Not her. <laughs> right, but it was my shirt. Yeah, which I bought, which would make it my shirt. <laughs> I bought a greeting card once that doesn't make me Hallmark. <laughs> well, I bought a lollipop once. Doesn't make me a sucker. <laughs> this is my idea, my business, my company, and my money. Ah. Your idea, my design. Your business, my design. Do you get where I'm going with this? Hey, 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 hey. Why don't you guys just share? Oh, she had her chance. Oh, come on, Barbara Jean. It was Reba's design. It's only fair that she gets half. Now, you remember what your mother taught you? Don't shape above the knee unless you're expecting company. <laughs> No, 
the other thing. He who is fair makes friends everywhere. Okay, fine, but if she gets half the money, she does half the work. Well, of course I will. I've been looking for a way to get some cash for Kira's college fund. Apparently, I'll do anything. Fine. You win. We'll work together, but I'll call the shots. <laughs> if you hear any shots, they're coming from me. Time to get started. Why did you take a breath? I mean, even if we do three shirts a night, we're still ahead of schedule. What's that? The stink of mediocrity? Okay, moving forward. I have cut up a bunch of fabric for patches, so why don't you make a prototype for us to work from? What about the shirt I already made? It was left with the buyer. What? Why would you do that? Well, management made a decision. We're just gonna have to live with it. <laughs> okay, fine. Go back and get the shirt, and we'll start again tomorrow. And lose a whole day? Unacceptable! We've got shirts, we've got patches, do that thing you do! If you don't lower your voice, I'm gonna do that thing I've always wanted to do. Reba, I knew you were gonna ruin this for me. Ruin what? Barbara Jean, quit being so testy. I am not testy. I am a serious businesswoman. Oh, I'll be glad when this company can afford a psychiatrist. <laughs> hey, Cheyenne, what you doing? Making a list of insulting names to call Van when he gets back from shaving his head. You know, I can't believe he's doing that after I absolutely, positively told him not to. Oh, my gosh. This is the first husband who's ever had a problem with a direct order. <laughs> Did you happen to tell him why you didn't want him to do it? No. Ah, we might be on to something. Look, I can ask you what's wrong, and eventually you'll tell me. Then I'll go to Van and tell him, and then he'll tell me his side of the story, and I'll just get you two to work it out. But you know what? I still got dinner to make, so go talk to him. Yeah, but Van doesn't have a side, Mom. Of course he does. That's what marriage is, finding out each other's side. Go talk to him. All right, I get it. It's just I feel... Go talk to him. I just feel like our marriage... Him! Him! <laughs> You know, you could be very annoying sometimes, Mother. The kid has a point. Ah, oh, shut up. What's it gonna be? Shave it. Bet you hear this a lot. My old lady doesn't want me to do it. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, it's... It's my head. It should be my decision. I just hate when she's mad at me. I don't know. I don't know. What do you think? Okay. Okay, let's do it. There's no way to, uh, comb that over, is there? Van, I need to talk to you. Could you give us a minute, please? Sure. I'll go see if that stripey thing is turning. What is it, Cheyenne? I'm kind of in the middle of something here. Whoa, that feels weird. <laughs> do this and then do this. Look, Van, my mom... 
<laughs> My mom said that I should um, tell you why I didn't want you to do this instead of just ordering you around. Well, I think that Let makes... me finish. <laughs> I didn't want you to do this because it made me feel left out. Oh, Cheyenne. <laughs> you want to shave your head, too? No. My hair's beautiful. <laughs> I felt left out because... You know, you have this job, and it's it's taking up all these areas of your life, and now it's it's taking your hair. Yeah. But this, this this doesn't mean anything. This is just something I have to do for my job. It's similar to how some people have to take certain tests to get a job, like when a bartender has to pass the bar. <laughs> Look, it used to be just you and me. Now you have this whole other life, and I'm. I'm not even a part of it. Hey, I... I tried to make you a part of it. I mean, I came to you two times. I mean, I wanted your support. I, I, I wanted you to be here with me because I'm doing this for you and Elizabeth. I'm doing this for our future. I mean, do you think I really want to look like the mayor of Munchkinland? Look, I'm sorry, Van. It's just... No, this is the only van I've ever known. Look, look. If you don't want me to finish, I guess I don't have to. I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure we can afford a very narrow toupee. So what's it gonna be? Okay. Jake's in bed. How's your head? Are you sane yet? <laughs> no. I feel like a failure. We failed. I didn't fail. I ain't started yet. Parker, <laughs> oh, Jean, calm down. We got plenty of time. No, we don't. We don't know how much time we have. Sure we do. The shirts aren't due till next Friday. Reba, open your eyes. I'm not talking about the shirts. I'm talking about Brock. Yeah, he's, he's selling the practice. He wants to play pro golf. I don't think he knows what he's doing. Oh, honey. Is that what you're worried about? <laughs> of course he doesn't know what he's doing. <laughs> he's making all these changes, Reba. What if the next change he wants to make is me? Oh, that's not going to happen. Well, you'll forgive me if I don't find much comfort in the assurances of his ex-wife. <laughs> if the worst does happen, Reba, I just need to know that I can be something other than Brock's wife. But apparently, I can't. I can't even be the crazy lady that makes shirts. <laughs> Barbara Jean, he loves you. Reba, he loved you, too. The man's a pig. The company finally agrees on something. Herb Jean, look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Brock isn't going anywhere. He loves you. He's crazy about you, okay? Thank you. You're welcome. Let's see what you got going here. Barb Jean, I gotta look at it sometime. Come on. If they like patches, they're gonna love these. Oh God, it's so ugly. Don't scream. It's me. I know. You know, actually, I'm kind of getting used to it. By the time it grows back, I might even miss it. When's that going to be, by the way? Hey, honey, it's Daddy. <laughs> I didn't treat you like that when you were bald. <laughs> Cheyenne, I think I made a mistake. No, you just have to remember why you did it, to be like one of the guys. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, see, <laughs> the other guys didn't do it. What? Yeah, they tricked me. <laughs> They're mean. Hold me. Jenny Garth. And next, it's an all new What I Like About You. Ben, what are you doing? I'm trying to make my hair grow faster. Mom, is it hard to make a volcano? I need to make one for my science fair. Start with something a little easier, like making your bed. Hey, Mrs. H, can I help Jake build his volcano? Really? Yeah. I've always wanted to do that. My father hated doing stuff with me. He would always have my projects professionally made. One year for science fair, my project was a dialysis machine. Thanks, man. Can we make the volcano spit real fire? <laughs> real fire. Well, let's not get carried away. Huge fire. Hey, Reba. Just so you know, the situation is under control. <clears throat> what situation? Is Kira allergic to any medicines? Is Kira sick? Sorry, yeah, yeah. I need to borrow a heating pad and a blowtorch. <laughs> a blowtorch? Well, I'm making creme brulee, but that's not the point. <laughs> oh, honey, what's wrong? I'll tell you what's wrong. She's sick. On Tuesday, the day I read to the blind. <laughs> Who's going to tell them I'm not there? <laughs> Look. Put your tongue out. Put your tongue in. Put your tongue out. Now shake it all about. Reba, you do not hokey pokey with the ill. She's faking. Trust me, I can spot a sick kid from 50 yards in a dense fog, and she's not sick. All right, Kira, what's going on with you? Nothing. <laughs> okay, you can tell me why you're faking it, or you can go to school right now. But if I told you why I was faking, then you'd know I was faking, and then you'd make me go to school anyway. So there's really no upside. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I suggest you go upstairs and change, or you're going to go to school in your jammies. Fine. I hope I get sick for real. Oh, that'll teach us. <laughs> Man, I am so easily fooled. I wonder if all those people I read to are really blind. <laughs> I think some of them are just lazy. <laughs> Did that seem odd to you? Yes. Why? <laughs> because Kira's never faked being sick. She's faked being well because she wants to go to school. I'm gonna call down to the school, see if something's going on. Or we could disguise ourselves as teenage girls and infiltrate her circle of friends. <laughs> <laughs> Planet in the past, though my life is changing fast. Who I am is who I wanna be. A single mom who works too hard, who loves her kids and never stops. With gentle hands and the heart of a fighter, I'm a survivor. Pretty girl. <laughs> oh, no. You said you'd help me reorganize the attic. You are not hitting the course right now. You know, sweetheart, since golf is going to be my new job, we really should consider the course as my office. So, <laughs> I'm going to the office. Sit down, Brock. We need to talk. <laughs> well, isn't this great? Maybe I should get a third wife, then I'd never have to play golf. What's up? Well, after Kira's little illness this morning, I made a call down to the school. Apparently, she's been absent four times this month. Hey. Whoops, my mistake. I walked into the room marked lynch mob. Mark it. Kira, is it true you missed four days of school? Barbara Jean, you signed the notes. You tricked me! You didn't want my autograph. <laughs> and on 
in the days when she did attend school, she was cutting classes. Cutting? You don't cut classes. Exactly! <laughs> and I, for one, would like to know what's going on, little missy. Nothing's going on. Kira, we're going to get to the bottom of this, even if it means we have to stay here till 3.15 to do it. Fine. A couple of kids at school have been giving me a hard time, and some days I just don't feel like dealing with it. It's always the bullies. Or the jocks. Or the preps. The nerds aren't all that friendly either. <laughs> How long has this been going on? My whole life. <laughs> Kira? I don't know. A while. Well, sweetheart, why didn't you say anything? Yeah. Why? So you could call a parent-teacher conference and embarrass me in front of everyone? No. No. So we could discuss the situation and find a rational solution. I think we should call a parent-teacher conference. <laughs> Oh, no. You do not go crying to the teacher. <laughs> that only gets you shoved in a locker with chalk up your nose and duct tape in your hair. <laughs> Honey, I wish I'd been there to protect you. Except you were 34. <laughs> it would be easier if I could just switch schools. Kira? Honey? In my experience, there are only two ways to deal with bullies. You can hide in the bushes until they forget about you, or you can buy them presents. <laughs> Which reminds me, Reba, I picked you up a little something at the mall yesterday. <laughs> oh, hey, Mrs. H. If you need us, we're going to be in the garage building our mountain of death. <laughs> this puppy's going to have molten lava. Miniature trees and tiny little villagers running for their lives. <laughs> Say hello to Pedro. Oh. Hello, Pedro. He's a blacksmith, and he's about to die. <laughs> Can I play with him? No! <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, just be careful, buddy. They're fragile. <laughs> But we have a situation, and this time, it's real. Yeah. We were called down to pick up Kira from school. Apparently, she got into an argument with some girl and punched her in the mouth. What? Kira hit someone? Kira, is this true? Ah, oh, you know how it is on the playground. One minute we're standing around drinking, the next we're throwing punches. <laughs> hey, guys. Hey, Kira. Man, I hope I can move out one day so I can constantly be here. <laughs> Don't mess with Kira. She punched a girl at school. Oh, I knew it was only a matter of time before Miss Congeniality snapped. Spell congeniality. <laughs> spell no. Okay, spell knock it off. All right, girls, we don't have time for this Cheyenne Kira love fest. Kira, what's going on with you? Nothing. We're losing her, Reba. Losing her to the mean streets of Houston. <laughs> Why would you punch some girl? It's how she shows affection. That's right. So why don't you come over here for a little hug? Oh. Girls! Girls! <laughs> Girls! Stop it! Kira, start talking. She started messing with me, so I took a swing at her. I didn't even think I'd connect. It's no big deal. Oh, I think a little girl going home from school with a steak pressed to her face is a big deal. What on God's green earth made you snap? Have you considered the fact that she's a total psycho? <laughs> shut up. You shut up. Girls, this is your last warning. I gotta get out of here. Kira, what did that girl do to make you lose it? She called Cheyenne a slut, okay? She called Cheyenne a slut, so I punched her. Oh my gosh, my psycho sister loves me. <laughs> Kira, standing up for Cheyenne. I hear the words, but I can't wrap my head around them. I cannot believe that girl called me a slut. I was so far from a slut. I was a tease. Cheyenne, if you were a tease, I wouldn't be a grandfather yet.
Even if Kira was standing up for Cheyenne, we still have a huge problem. She decked that girl. But she was defending a member of our family, which is what our family has always done. Yes. Rib, if I didn't know better, I'd say you were proof of this. Is that a slam against my family? Oh, well, hey, hey. <laughs> Come on, Barbara Jean. You heard what that girl called me? Yeah. Plus, it takes one to know one. Except I'm not one. But if I was one, then she would have to be one, you know. Two. <laughs> Kira still has to be punished. Oh, you got that right. If we don't, she could turn on us. And I bruise like a peach. I do not want my baby sister to suffer because of some name-calling girl who I bet is stupid and ugly. <laughs> Just be tough with her, Reba. It's the only thing her kind understands. Oh, hey there, Buttercup! Kira? Kira, come here. Look at me. I want you to hear me when I say this. Okay? I love you loving me. Wow. That almost wasn't about you. <laughs> Kira, we're all very happy that you stuck up for your sister. Yes, but hitting that girl was wrong and there need to be consequences. So, you're going to have to be punished, right, Reba? <sighs> yes. I'm sorry, but your dad's right. So I'm afraid there will be no Jackson Brown concert next month. Who the heck is Jack? <laughs> Don't push it. I never knew you felt that way about me. Can we please not make a big deal about this? Anything you want, because as of now, we are spending every free moment together. I'm taking you to the mall. What? Come what? on. No, please, just one more punch. <laughs> Jake, shouldn't you and Van be working on your project? Van gave me ten dollars to leave him alone. <laughs> Bring me a virgin! <laughs> Mrs. H, you have to take a look at this. First, smoke and glowing lights. Signal the eruption. Then this trigger mixes the vinegar and baking soda to form the lava. And then finally, a spring-loaded mechanism sends the whole thing straight to the ceiling! <laughs> you wanna see? You probably should wear goggles. Man, did Jake help you build this? Oh yeah, about that, he's not very good with his hands. <laughs> this is Jake's project, not yours. Plus, that thing weighs more than he does. But, but Mrs. H, look at it. It's beautiful! There's no way he won't get an A. An A is not the point. Do you even remember school? <laughs> Do you remember when I helped Jake build his model of the Alamo last year? Oh, you're kidding. He had help with that? <laughs> mm. He put glitter in the courtyard and a unicorn in the stables. Two details you won't find in the history book, but it was cute. I let him do it his way because it was his project. And after we were finished, he felt good about it. How is this any different than what your father used to do with you? You're right. I've turned into my dad. <laughs> Next thing you know, I'll be calling people sport and getting hair plugs. <laughs> hey, listen, sport. Look, maybe this volcano's a little busy. How about me and you, we make another one, together? What do you say? Really? Do I have to? <laughs> yes. Okay. But instead of lava, can it shoot out glitter? <laughs> Glitter. <laughs> sure. We'll call it Volcano. The musical. Here, I'm just saying that you should kiss as many boys as you can because one day you wake up and boom, it's senior year and you're married. 
Well, if it isn't the Bobsy twins, you guys have a good time? Oh, it was great. That's the first breath she's taken. <laughs> you are so <laughs> hilarious. Ow. It is so cool having such a hilarious sister. <laughs> Take good care of my hilarious sister while I'm upstairs, okay, Mommy? <laughs> <laughs> Well, if you were a little older, I'd offer you a drink. <laughs> Let me make you some tea. Thanks. Oh, wait. Wait a minute. Mom, I gotta confess something. And if you ever tell anyone I said this, I'll deny it. And I'll never tell you anything ever again. Ever. What is it? I actually had a pretty good time with her. your secret safe with me. Nobody would have believed it anyway. <laughs> Reba, we have a huge problem. No, we don't. Diane and Kara are friends. All's well in the world. Yeah, I, I just got a call from Kara's principal. They have a zero tolerance policy towards violence. They're kicking her out of school. What? They can't do that. Zero tolerance, Reba. Do you know how much tolerance they have? <laughs> Zero. That's completely unfair. She's one of their best students. I told them that. Sure, she had a little lapse in judgment, but that's no reason to ruin her life. I told them that, too. Well, you didn't tell them loud enough. I'm going to go down there and talk to those people. Yeah, I told them that, too. <laughs> you know who else has zero tolerance? Reba. <laughs> doing this they're gonna get mad they might kick jake out of school you're up you stood up for cheyenne we're gonna stand up for you but i don't know but that's what family does okay have a seat i've been out of high school almost 30 years it still makes me nervous to go to the principal's office <laughs> you chewing gum? no Yes, you are. Are you trying to get us into even more trouble now? Get rid of it. Swallow it. I'm good. Okay. I'm good. So, what's our plan of attack? Okay. Well, we open up with Kira's school record. Yeah. Straight A student, honor roll, that sort of thing. And then we point out that there are thousands of students in the school, and she's only decked one. <laughs> That is brilliant. Hey. My gun came back. That is a good omen. Hey, guys. Cheyenne. Oh, it was so sweet of you to come down here to support your sister. Are you kidding me? After what Kira did for me, there is no way I'm letting them kick her out of school. Mom, do we really have to do this? Honey, look, I know you're nervous, but we've got to go in there and tell them what happened. I just want to go home. Sweetheart, it'll be fine. Hey, I've got a great idea. We should have Cheyenne tell the story. Can you cry on cue? Are you kidding? Guess who has never had a traffic ticket? <laughs> <laughs> Me too! Okay, Cheyenne and I are going to cry. <laughs> Mom, don't worry. If it looks fake, I'll make them stop. Stop. <laughs> Mrs. Hart? Mom, don't do this. Kara, I told you. I it... wasn't defending Cheyenne. I wanted to get kicked out. Are you coming? Uh, we're going to need a minute. What are you talking about? Are you saying that girl didn't call me a slut? No. She called you a slut and a loser and a teenage baby machine. Oh, you could have just said yes. I know. <laughs> she also said that I was going to be just like Cheyenne, which is what everybody says all the time. I guess I'm just tired of hearing, hey, Kira, how many kids are you going to have by prom? Well, did you also say that Cheyenne is going to college now and she has an A minus average? It's not my job to defend her. I just want to live my own life. I want to go to some school where nobody's even heard of Cheyenne. Here, I'm sorry you're carrying all this weight, but you're going about this all wrong. Well, what am I supposed to do? Stay here and be miserable for the next three years? Honey, when things are tough, you stick with it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Well, at least I didn't hit anybody. Kara, honey, we've got to go in there and tell them what's been going on. Because if we decide to go to another school, it needs to be on your terms, not because you were kicked out. So you'll let me transfer? We'll cross this bridge and then we'll talk about it. All right. Ready? Okay. I'll be there in a minute. Oh. Okay. Well, I'm glad you had a good laugh. You know, I was an idiot to think you actually liked me. I did like you. I do like you. Yeah, right. You know what? You fool me once and... Well, I don't know the rest of the saying, but you are not going to fool me again. <laughs> at the mall, in the car, at home, all the times you weren't hugging me. I like talking to you. <gasps> oh, God. All the times you weren't hugging me. <laughs> oh, sorry. So, what was your favorite part about talking to me? <laughs> all the words you mispronounced. No! <laughs> I'm letting them kick my hilarious sister out of school. Mom here? Yeah, she's in the kitchen. Who's got your nose? Who's got it? That's a good way to make your kid feel safe. Tell her parts of her body can get yanked off. <laughs> hey there, neighbor. How's school? It was like work, but without the money. I got news for you. So's work. <laughs> What brings you around? Well, I was on my way home to Dad's, but then I remembered. Dad's there. Dad in his third degree. Where were you? Who were you with? What were you doing? Ooh, man, you think he's your father. <laughs> then Barbara Jean's really start. Where were you really? Who were you really with? How does the CD player really work? <laughs> well, maybe she's just naturally inquisitive, you know, like a chimp. <laughs> Look, they're just a little on edge right now. What with your father trying to sell his practice and trying to get this golf thing going? Well, I wish they would stop. I can't keep hanging out the library. I'm getting a bad reputation. <laughs> Can we talk to them about it? Ah, they wouldn't listen. Well, they might. I'll bring them some bananas. <laughs> You will never believe what happened to me today. What? I got asked to appear on The Huddle, the, the, the team's cable TV show. Oh, you mean that, that goofy thing on, like, Channel 2000? <laughs> it's Channel 200. <laughs> and it's not goofy. It's very prestigious. Uh, and I'm the only rookie that's been asked to appear on it. Oh, hey, look yeah. at you, Mr. Big Shot. It's because you've been playing so well. That's true. And because you're hot. No. Well, I mean, yeah, but that's not the only reason. No, the, the team is starting this big marketing campaign to have more families come to games, and I'm one of the few players with the family. We are so lucky we got pregnant in high oh, school. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't even told you the coolest part yet. What? They asked me to have you come on the show. <gasps> Cheyenne, we're both going to be on a TV show. Oh, oh God. <laughs> I'm gonna get you so ready for that TV show. I can't do this. Look, we're just talking about it and I feel like I'm about to throw up. They say if you're nervous, you should picture the people in their underwear. I don't recommend it. Oh. I always lose my train of thought when I do that. Mm. <laughs> Barbara Jean? Yes, yeah, sorry. And believe me, the best thing to do when you're nervous is to talk slowly. You should talk so slowly, you think it sounds weird. Okay. Why do I have to be there, okay? I'm not on the team. I'm just your hot wife. They're, they're just supposed to show me up in the stands looking nervous when you get hurt. <gasps> 
Giant, I can't believe you don't want to do this. I mean, you love having people look at you. Yeah, Van, look at me. Not ask me questions, okay? I was on the drill team, not the debate club. Okay. So... Hey, how's rehearsal going? Oh, great, great. Go ahead, Barbara Jean. Okay. <clears throat> ask me a question. All right. <clears throat> So, Van, how do you balance your career with your family life? After all, you have a fairly large extended family, don't you? Well, Not I... Yet. <laughs> I understand that your father-in-law is remarried. Talk about his new wife. Can I take a crack at that one? <laughs> okay, okay, all right. <clears throat> Cheyenne's turn. Oh, God. Cheyenne, how has your life changed since fan term pro? Oh, oh. Oh, Barbara Jean, you don't ask a pretty blonde hard questions, you just admire them. Speaking of pretty blondes, where's Brock? Upstairs. Brock! Oh, wow, Barbara Jean, you got a new wall fairy? Well, I had to. Everybody knows fairies hang out in threes. Jeez, Barbara Jean, when you yell like that, you sound just like... <laughs> hey, Reba. But you sure do scoot when you're called for, huh? So what's up? Ah, nothing. I was just at work today, and Eugene was talking about you selling your practice. He was saying that it must be kind of a tense time for you. Yeah, well, you can tell Weasel Boy to mind his own business. <laughs> oh, I did. <laughs> but not before I made a bet with him that even if things are tense, that you two aren't giving Kira a hard time. You aren't, right? Okay. What is this really about? <laughs> ah, you are inquisitive, aren't you? Shoot, I meant to bring you a banana. <laughs> okay, wait a second. What happened? Did Kira complain about something? No, Kira wasn't complaining. Well, then why'd you come over here like there's some big problem to solve? Didn't say problem. Good, because there's not. The only problem is if we let Kira play us against each other. Right. And every time Kira says boo, you can't rush over here to make sure we're good parents. Didn't rush. You're the one who said it's important that we present a united front, Reba. I know. I know. Man, I wished I'd have brought a banana. <laughs> food there. Can't eat hamburgers. <laughs> You'd probably have a big church. And soda. And I'd have TVs all over the place and video games and it would only be five minutes long. <laughs> That's the same way you said you'd run school. That's the way I'd run everything. <laughs> hey, wait up. We're going too. Shine and Elizabeth are getting dressed. You're going to church? Wait a minute. What'd you do wrong? <laughs> Nothing. Church is just a good family thing to do. Oh, this is for that show thing he's going on. Show? What show? Oh, right. That TV thing. Jake, go grab the camera. Mrs. H, I want you to take some pictures of us praying. What? What? Oh, going to church? Good. Because you got plenty to confess, sister. If you don't change your tone, that might be true. Dang it, Reba. We're not supposed to let her play us against each other. Family, can't all this ugliness wait until after we've worshipped the Lord? <laughs> Brock, what are you babbling about? Kira and our united front. It undermines our authority if you let her do things like this. Things like what? She can't come over here in the middle of the night just because I yelled at her. What? Kira's not here. <laughs> Okay, everybody just calm down. Are you sure she's not at your house? Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Calm down, calm down, calm down. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. No, Reba, she's not at our house. Maybe she got up early and went to a friend's. Reba, I've been up since five. She had to have left in the middle of the night. What about her boyfriend, huh? That Scott kid. I will kill that kid. All right, what's his home number? Um, what if they ran away to Vegas? <laughs> Who knows Scott's home phone oh, number? Five 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 zero one six five. That's it. Call it. Five 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 zero one six five. 
here. Yeah. Huh? What? Oh my gosh, come here, honey. <gasps> oh, you are in big trouble. Oh, my sweet baby. It's busy. I'm going to keep calling. I'm sorry, okay? I came in when everybody was asleep and slept in my old room. <sighs> Without telling anyone, do you have any idea how scared we all were? You little knuckle bunny. Thanks for making me sweat right through my church clothes. Don't oh, come here anyway. Church oh. clothes? I jumped over a fire hydrant in my jammies. Okay, Kira. Funny joke. Now here's what you've won. You are grounded. You are big time, supersized, new and improved, grounded. When you come home from school, you go to your room. When you leave your room, you go to school. That's it. That's not fair. This wasn't fair. Now you go home. You see, Reba, this is what I was trying to explain to you the other day. She's just doing this to make us look like bad parents. But we are not bad parents. In fact, we are really good parents. And despite how this little stunt makes it look, we are totally on top of things. Yeah. Where's Henry? <laughs> Come on, Jake. We've got two more people to pray for. Whoa! <laughs> We're on the set. Isn't this exciting? It doesn't match my clothes, fam. Let's go. No, oh, come on. <laughs> There's nothing to it. You're going to do fine. Just remember what Barbara Jean said. Talk. It doesn't matter how I talk because I'm not going to talk. Slow. <laughs> Cheyenne. Free donuts. <laughs> Run. <sighs> There's a rising star. Where am I coming? Welcome to the huddle. I'm Nick Marone. Whoa. Mad Dog Marone. It is an honor to meet you, sir. Uh, this, is, this is my wife, Cheyenne. Cheyenne, it's nice to meet you. Now, can I get you anything before we get started? Scotch. I think we've got enough snacks for the Van and Cheyenne show? Yep. Man, they are so lucky. Don't you think it would be cool to be on a TV show? A TV show? Nah. I think it'd be cool to be a singer. There you go. You take all that in the living room and I'll bring the drinks. Hey, Mom. Hey, you here to see the big show? Wait a minute. Aren't you supposed to go directly home after school? I'll just tell Colonel Clink I took the scenic route. <laughs> Sorry, Kira, but I'm with Colonel Clink on this one. You scared the heck out of us the other night. If you'd have woke me up when you got here, things would be different. But you handled this all wrong. I know. And I said I was sorry. You know, the thing that kills me is that you did it knowing you'd get caught. You did it deliberately. No, I didn't. Oh, come on, Carrie. You're not stupid. You know when they found out that your father and Sergeant Schultz would freak? <laughs> I planned on waking up early and going back before they got up. <laughs> yeah, right. Like I did the other times. What? Forget it. I'll just go home. No, 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 no. Sit down. Are you saying that you've come over in the middle of the night before? Yes. Okay? I have. Sometimes I just can't take the fighting, and I need to get out of there. What are you saying? That they fight with you so much that you feel like you have to run away? Honey, is that what's happening? No. They fight with each other. Oh. I, I, I just can't stand listening to it. It was 2 o'clock in the morning and they were still yelling in their room. I just had to get out of there. Okay, when they come out of the theme music, they're going to cue me. That's our ball to run with. How you feeling, Cheyenne? You a little nervous? Um, that's, uh, that's me on the monitor. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, well, I, I look, um, I look great. <laughs> ben, 
fan, <laughs> check it out. <laughs> Look how goofy your head looks. <laughs> You okay, buddy boy? Welcome to the huddle. I'm your host, Nick Mad Dog Marone. My very special guest today is rookie standout linebacker and tight end, Van Montgomery. Welcome, number 88. Hello. We're also very excited to have Van's lovely wife here with us today, Cheyenne. Oh, hello, Nick. It's great to be here with you. And with all you wonderful Houston fans. <laughs> Go Thunder Bears! <laughs> oh, I'm Cheyenne! Yeah! You know something? You're the first player's wife we've had on this show. Well, I guess that makes me a rookie, too, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> So, Van, I know a lot of our viewers with families are just wondering how you manage to balance the responsibilities of professional athlete and father. Yeah. yeah. I got her pregnant. I don't know. I play football. That's it. Oh. Um. Well, Nick, Van is actually incredible at both jobs. He gives it all he has on the playing field and all he has at home. You know, even after a tough practice, he still comes home and reads Elizabeth her bedtime stories. Is that true, Van? Why don't we take a phone call? <clears throat> okay. You're on the air with rookie sensation number 88, Van Montgomery. Yeah. It's so nice to see a player who's a nice family man. Cheyenne, I love your hair. Where do you get it cut? That is so sweet. <laughs> Actually, I get it cut at Salon Verona on Fair Oaks. Well, now that you've given them a plug, I'm sure they'll cut it for free. Oh, really? Well, in that case, I buy all of my clothes at Donna's Outlet on Oak. <laughs> I got her pregnant. <laughs> Phones. You're in the huddle with Van and Cheyenne Montgomery. Yeah, I, hate th I think uh, Van is a lucky guy. Uh, I mean, he has a beautiful wife who's so supportive of him. Well, makeup, I'm blushing. <laughs> <laughs> well, you shouldn't be. That guy was right on the mark. Oh, Nick, thank you. Let's take another call. Okay. <laughs> You're on the air with uh, Cheyenne Montgomery. <laughs> father-in-law is remarried? Talk about his new wife. Let's go ahead and save that one for Oprah, lady. So, Van, you sure seem like a guy who just has it all. I mean, you have a beautiful wife, wonderful child. Tell us all what it's like to be a guy who's on top of the world. Did you see it? If you didn't, I taped it. Yeah, I saw it. Good job on coaching them. Unbelievable. Kira's 15 minutes late. You know what that means? No TV for the rest of the week. Well, that's great. Then she can just sit in the kitchen and stare at me. <laughs> Actually, she's over at my house. What? She's not supposed to go anywhere after school. She's grounded. I know that, Brock. Maybe we ought to talk about that. About you undermining our authority? Nito, let's do talk about that. Look, what Kira did the other night was wrong. We all get that. Kira gets that. But maybe it wouldn't be a bad thing if she had some place to go to to chill out. Oh, boy. How mad would you have been if I'd suggested something like that when she was living with you? <laughs> Touche. But the point is, she's over at my house. No, Reba. 
No, I don't think it's a good idea. Now, would you please go ask Kira to come home? Pronto. Yeah, you're not the only one who speaks French. <laughs> I don't think I'm willing to do that. At least not until we talk about this. We have talked about it. What, what is going on? What is she telling you? I really can't say. Why not? <laughs> because she... Just because. Well, gee, I thought you wanted to talk, Reba. Touche back at you. <laughs> she says that you guys yell at each other. <laughs> Us? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, that's believable. <laughs> Look, Barbara Jean, I'm not trying to get in your business here. Well, it's not true. The biggest argument we have is who loves the other one more. I win. <laughs> Barbara Jean. No, we don't yell. It's okay. We don't yell! <laughs> I think it's hard for her to listen to. Maybe because you know how it was in the end between Brock and me. Well, it's not like that with us, Reba. It's always funny when we yell. Yeah, we sure have been laughing a lot around here lately. <laughs> I just want my daughter to feel safe. And she does feel safe. Why are we even talking about this? Barbara Jean, if she's feeling like she felt the other night mm -hmm. and can't come to my house, she's going to go somewhere. And I don't think I'm going to let that happen. So what are we saying here, Reba? I'm going to tell her that she's allowed to come to my house when she needs to, as long as she tells you. Fine. Because she won't need to. I mean, she's just making a mountain out of a molehill. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to go check on the pot roast. It's Kira's favorite, you know, although I bet she tells you she hates it. <laughs> you always think the kids don't hear it, you know? Yeah. I'll tell her it's fine with me. Okay. By the way, she really does hate pot roast. <laughs> yeah, me too. Mother's Day. Oh, honey, you don't have to get me anything. But I love you, and I want to get you something really nice. <laughs> oh, honey, that is so sweet. Oh, I don't know. Maybe some flowers? Great. Where's your wallet? <laughs> it's up in my bedroom. <laughs> Jake, nothing too nice. I'm broke. <laughs> Put my name on the card. <laughs> Well, what is this? Why, it's a letter addressed to Van and Cheyenne Montgomery from our bank. <laughs> really? What does your piggy say? <laughs> Same thing he always says. Shut up, Kira. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Ah, this is so exciting. We got our first interest payment on our savings account. Look, well, a dollar and 23 cents. <laughs> Whoa, I wouldn't have made fun of you if I'd known you were rich. <laughs> You know, opening the savings account was the smartest thing Van and I ever did. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> that was very responsible, Shane. It was wicked responsible. And next month, we are going to get a... And the next month, and the next month, and the next thing you know... Old Jed's a millionaire. <laughs> well, I better dinner with Scott and his parents. It gives them a chance to stare awkwardly at me and not talk. Hey, Reba. Hey. Barbara Jean has some great news for you. I told her not to. She wouldn't listen. What are you talking about? Well, do you remember the other night when you said your love life was horrible? I never said my love life was horrible. Well, believe me, it is. <laughs> Anywho, once again, I have come to your rescue. Oh, no, please tell me she's not coming to my rescue. She did. She set you up. <laughs> oh, Lordy, no. Oh, Lordy. It's the man of your dreams, the future Mr. Reba. I told her this was a big mistake. <laughs> oh. Not that big.
Reba, Terry, Terry, Reba. Terry goes to our church. Reba pretty much stays here. <laughs> yeah, well, church is tomorrow. Tonight, you and I are going to worship at the church of Boogie. <laughs> you can't stop him. He's like a wind-up toy. <laughs> so are we going to just all stand around? Or are we going to get down, oh, get down, <laughs> get down? Is there a third option? <laughs> Well, since we dropped him off, why don't we leave these two kids alone? Whoa, no. Whoa, no is right. It's not only the perfect date, it's a double date. <laughs> Barbara Jean, can I see you in the kitchen yeah. for just a minute? <laughs> oh! Your ex-wife is hot. <laughs> you should see her from up here. So that's my perfect date? I'd like to see the guys you eliminated. <laughs> Look, I know that Terry has his shortcomings. <laughs> Not on purpose, swear. But you two have a lot in common. You're both divorced. Yeah, I was wondering where the other divorced person in the world was. <laughs> You're also both smart and funny and sweet. He reminds me of you. In a small man's body. <laughs> I don't want to date me. I'm with me all the time. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> so it'll just be the one date, and then we'll just play it by ear. No, no dates, no ears, no nothing. <laughs> Wait, we can't just kick him out. He's in a very vulnerable place right now. I think his divorce was very painful. We know what that's like. <laughs> and the pain just keeps on coming. <laughs> Fine, I'll give him one hour. But these eight minutes count against it. Sometimes when I'm really bored, I go into the big and tall store just to mess with their heads. Sometimes when I'm really bored, kind of like now. All right, Elizabeth is asleep. Hey, Cheyenne. Hey. Wait, you know her? Yeah. Uh, Van was teaching him how to play football. <laughs> Well, how'd that go for you? Good, good, except he thought I was gay. <laughs> Get out. Yeah, it was all big misunderstanding. And then I thought he was trying to hit on me, so I called him Mary and blah, blah, blah. I'm sure you know the drill. I'm sure it's nothing you hadn't experienced before. <laughs> Betty. What's that supposed to mean? Oh, come on. Handsome guys like us are labeled all the time. <laughs> you got that right, buddy. <laughs> Did you miss me, Mary? <laughs> I'm not gay. Okay, honey, we know, we know. We're just kidding. I know. <laughs> no, Bob. <laughs> What's the big surprise all about? Oh, it's outside. It's fabulous. Oh. I mean, it's really cool. <laughs> Okay, keep your eyes closed. We're almost there. Okay. Do me. You do me. Hey. <laughs> What's a surprise? Ta-da! What's this? This is our new car. Well, it's an old car, but it's our new old car. Please tell me you stole this. No, no, I bought it. Cheyenne, we've always dreamed of owning a sports car. You know what that means? We can stop dreaming. Then you bought it? But we just started putting money in our savings account. Right, and what are we saving for? To buy stuff we want. Just think of this as us skipping a step. <laughs> wow. A 66 Stang. 65. <laughs> I think I know a little bit about cars, and this, my friend... Is a 1966. It has a 289, not a 260. The grill is honeycomb, not multi-barred. And I bet you money, if you pop that hood, you're going to find an alternator, not a direct current generator. 
<laughs> Horn works. So, all by yourself, you decided to just buy a car. Oh, it was magic, Cheyenne. I was on the bus coming back from practice. And I looked out the window and I saw this car. It said, you don't belong on a bus, cowboy. <laughs> I looked around. There was no cowboy on the bus. It was talking to me. Really? And while you were having this conversation with your new little friend, did, did he bother asking you how you can make a decision like this without talking to your wife first? I mean, Vanna, how could you spend all of this money without asking me if it was okay? Well, Cheyenne, I don't need to ask your permission. <laughs> I'm gonna miss you, Mary. <laughs> Cheyenne, I'm sorry I bought the car. I feel horrible. <sighs> Till I get behind the wheel and hit the gas. <laughs> he bought a car? Yeah. A Mustang from 1960-ish. Boy, I'm glad y'all are back. For a while there, I thought I was on a date with Betty. <laughs> he calls me that because he thinks I'm handsome. Well, you can't actually call this a date because we're not going out. But as long as you're here, I guess we can spend the next 52 minutes together. He shoots! He scores. <laughs> he dreams. <laughs> so, Terry, tell me a little bit about yourself. Well, what can I say, darling? I'm a tomcat on the prowl. <laughs> <laughs> really? And that pays well? Hey. See, this is what I was hoping for. You could run a waffle iron on the electricity in this room. <laughs> Boy, maybe I should go tell the kids... They're about to get a new stepdaddy. Oh. <laughs> Honey, shh. Let Reba and Terry talk. Well, I'm not all talk. Huh. <laughs> oh, I could use a waffle iron about right now. I've been working in a dental office for the last year. Mm -hmm. Really, that is just fascinating. <laughs> well, it's really not all that fascinating. <laughs> well, it is the way you tell it. <laughs> Here, let me get you a coaster. There you go. You do realize that these are my legs, and those are your legs. <laughs> yeah, but my legs don't turn me on. Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. Woo -hoo. This has been fun. My gosh, that hour is just going by just like that. <laughs> what are you doing, Reba? <sighs> I can't do this. I'm sorry, Terry, but I'm not interested in you romantically. I'm just not. I'm sorry. Oh, this is so awkward. It's all my fault. I came on too strong. No, no. Yes, yes. Bye-bye. <laughs> I'm so ashamed. Th this isn't me. It's not? No. My wife dumped me for a guy that acts like this. I thought that's what women want. Uh, I've been acting like a pig, Reba. I, I apologize. Well, that's okay. Sorry to hear about your wife. Oh, I got dumped for some big blonde goofball. Oh. Hey, me too. <laughs> really? Oh, man, the stories I can tell you. <laughs> You've already heard those stories, Reba. <laughs> no, no, no. I want to I wanna hear how you guess. Hey, uh, what's the worst thing your ex ever did? Hmm. Would you settle for the top three? <laughs> well, I think we made Reba uncomfortable enough for one night. We should go. What, and wreck our fun? Park it. Yeah. It's the least you could do for leaving this peach of a woman. <laughs> you hear that, Rock? Terry here thinks I'm a peach. <laughs> you know, I prefer to focus on the positive. You get the bed all to yourself. You don't have to share a closet. And the best part of it is, 
They just ain't there. <laughs> Gosh, you make it sound so good. <laughs> I can't wait till I get divorced. <laughs> Barbara Jean. I'm just trying to fit in. Don't wreck this for me. Oh, my God. <laughs> you know that when my ex-wife left me, she said she wanted to go find herself. Uh. <laughs> I didn't have the heart to tell her she ain't worth looking for. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, boy. It feels good to let loose. <laughs> I jazzercise. <laughs> Can you believe they ran off to Spain? Their note said they were never coming back. You know, I bet you guys would love Europe. <laughs> Speaking of Europe, Brock recently quit his dental practice to pursue other interests. What? Yeah, why don't we talk about that? What are you going to do? Uh, play golf. Pro golf. Mm, yeah. yeah. I was talking to a young man down the street. He was doing a similar thing. Oh. oh, yeah? How's that? Well, he wanted to be a baseball player, but now he wants to be a space man. <laughs> Who wants scotch? <laughs> he probably drinks to get rid of the guilt of leaving you for this one. <laughs> <laughs> you little hobbit. <laughs> you know, I think if I hit him really hard on top of his head once, I could drive him all the way into the ground. <laughs> What's up? Ah, uh, nothing. I just eat whenever Shine gets mad at me. Whoa, pal. That's a bad habit to get into. <laughs> I just don't see what the big deal is. It's a cool car. I got a great deal. I even had a mechanic check it out. I did everything right except check with her first. You did nothing right. I was buying a belt the other day. I called Barbara Jean and Reba. <laughs> I make the money. I shouldn't have to check with my wife every time I want to spend it. I mean, it just doesn't seem fair. Look, uh, then, self. But once you're married, it's not just your money. But the check was made out to me. <laughs> yeah, and when Cheyenne becomes a dentist, the check will be made out to her, but the money will belong to both of you. And then she'll have to check with me before she spends it? No. <laughs> This. I mean, we never used to fight about money. Well, it's because you never had any. And now that you do, you got to figure out some system to deal with it. System? Yeah. Really? What's yours? I hide the checkbook. So do you think I should get rid of the car? Well, if it were me, I'd, I'd offer to sell it and then pretend that nobody wanted to buy it. Uh, but that's probably why I ended up divorced. Well, I see it is still out in the driveway. Look, Cheyenne, honey, I, I, I don't, I don't want to fight about who is right and you are wrong. Um, <laughs> now that we have money, we need to figure out some sort of system to deal with it. Okay, how about this? Since I'm the one that buys everything for the family, I should be in charge of the money. Well, you're not in charge of buying everything. Okay, Van, what size shoe does Elizabeth wear? <laughs> it's like... Small. Huh. Well, you know what? That's not fair. What size shoe do I wear? Twelve. Well, yeah, you're yeah. right, but they're snug. <laughs> Look, Cheyenne, I don't want to have to come to you every time I want to spend money. I'm an impulse buyer. I won't get to buy anything. Fine. Okay, how about this? Each of us can spend up to, to $100 without asking the other person anything over that we have to agree upon. Good. Okay. My car will count as the first 17 times. Van! But come on, Cheyenne, I really want... I really put money into our savings account. Yeah, but a savings account doesn't go room, room. Yeah, but it does go, you're safe. Is that what this is about? Yes. Ever since I got pregnant, things have felt so out of control. You know, if it hadn't been for my mom, I don't know what we would have done. You know, and now when... When I look at our savings account, it's like I know that we're going to be okay. I, I have not felt that way in a really long time. Oh, Cheyenne. Okay. The next paycheck I get goes straight to the bank. Really? Yes. Okay. Minus the car payment. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Well, I guess I should ride in it before I make my decision. Yes! We're keeping it! <laughs> oh, <laughs> Man, life was so much simpler when we were poor. Oh, yeah. Your mom has no idea how lucky she is. <laughs> And the next thing you know, she's having his baby. <laughs> That's a true story. Barbara Jean? You didn't tell me any of this. Woo, the tongues are gonna be wagging in church on Sunday. <laughs> Goody. <laughs> yeah, I might not be there. <laughs> well, look at that. It's already. <laughs> well, I don't have a watch on, but my wrist hairs are standing up, which means it's time to go. <laughs> Thanks, Reba. Oh, and, uh,. You're out of scotch. Uh, all right. All right, Terry, come on. Come on, it's time no, to go. No, I, I want to stay. No, 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 no. No, I, I really think, I really think that we should go. I'm having a good... I will I... shove you in my purse! <laughs> <laughs> Barbara Jean, can I talk to you outside? Yeah, yeah, time? yeah. Get your shoes on. <laughs> Gee, why are you so tense? I thought you wanted Terry and me to get along. Yeah, but not to be like best friends. I mean, you never sit around with me and joke about your divorce. <laughs> yeah, but we joke about a lot of other things, like that guy you married. <laughs> what I mean is, you've opened up to Terry more in the past hour than you have with me in our entire relationship just made me realize that we'll never be as close as I hoped. Yeah, well. We will never be great friends, will we? Oh, not if you keep whining about it. <laughs> Look, I don't know what's going to happen to us. But I do know that I used to hate you. Now you only kind of bug me. <laughs> Who knows, two years from now, I might not hide every time you come over. But am I special to you? Special? Well, let's put it this way. There are a lot of divorced people that I could joke around with. But you are the only person who can be the other woman. <laughs> well, that is something I gotta write in my Reaper journal. I got my shoes on. Get in the car. <laughs> Good night, Ray. Bye, Terry. <laughs> you know, you and I have a really weird relationship, don't we? Well, I could use that waffle iron right yeah. about now. <laughs> Rhonda. Dan! Oh, good morning, Van. Hey, Mrs. H, if Cheyenne asks, I was not out driving my new sports car. She hates her. time reading now the caterpillar turns into a butterfly i did not see that coming hey then is that the book where the caterpillar drives his fancy mustang i knew it oh, yeah, this is age. ben you have to choose it's me or Rhonda. Rhonda. oh van named his car Rhonda. you ever met a Rhonda that wasn't after your man mom Nope. And the worst part is, he won't even let me drive it. Her. Drive her. <laughs> and now we have to go pick up Elizabeth, and since Rhonda doesn't have back seatbelts, we have to borrow your car again. Oh, no, not again. <gasps> you guys never fill it up. And the other day, there was a taco underneath my seat. That doesn't make it yours. 
<laughs> Van, we are parents now. We should have a car like mom's. It's practical and boring and responsible. And beige. Uh-uh, uh-uh. Harvest gold. Harvest beige. It's true, Mrs. H. Your car's a dull beige yawn mobile. But we need to borrow it. Okay, fine. Take my beige boring car. Might not be hot and sexy, but by golly, you can put three bags of fertilizer in the trunk. It's real pretty, Jake. By the way, chicks love that. Hey, Mom. Hey. I need a ride to basketball practice. Jake! Van and Cheyenne just took my car. You gotta tell me these things. Okay. Mom, I need to ride to basketball practice. <laughs> Just take Van's car. It's right outside. Uh, I don't think Van wants anybody driving his car. Did he specifically tell you not to? No. Then it's not a rule. Just like you never specifically told him he can't eat peanut butter straight from the jar. <laughs> he uses a spoon, right? He kind of makes one with his fingers. Oh, gross! Come on, Jake. As soon as I drop you off, Ron and I are going to go buy some peanut butter. Who's Rhonda? <laughs> Guy with a family buys a silly car like this. I think it's cool. It's not cool. It's not bad. <laughs> ah. <laughs> <laughs> Hey there, cowboy. I'm gonna name you Ron. Hey! I'm a planet in the past. Though my life is changing fast. Who I am is who I wanna be. A single mom who works too hard, who loves her kids and never stops. With gentle hands and the heart of a fighter I'm a survivor Hey, Mom. Hey. So, Jake said you were driving really fast. He thinks you're cool. <laughs> well... I may have had to teach a punk and a Camaro a little lesson when the light turned green. Hey, Mom. Guess what? We need to borrow your car again. Guess why? Here are a few clues. Van, Rhonda, dumb move. No problem. Here you go. All right. What? We're family, and family share. I share my car with you, and who knows, maybe Van one day will share his car with me. <laughs> Apples and oranges. <laughs> So, when are we going for a ride? Oh, no. Sneaking Van's car is my thing. Well, all right, but it would be a shame if Van found out somehow. You wouldn't. Why not? I'm from a broken home. <laughs> Fine, but you gotta wear that. A scarf? Mom, come on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Rhonda has a dress code. <laughs> Oh, oh well, wow, look who's back. <laughs> How'd it go? I hate basketball. I had to go to girl. <laughs> yeah, little Zoe Levin lit him up like a Christmas tree. So, uh, what's with the get-ups? Well, it's, um... Mother-daughter day. Yeah. Where? In the 50s? <laughs> <laughs> no! Uh, at the scarf museum. <laughs> It's, it's great if, if you're into scarves. I want to go. No, you don't. <laughs> yeah, well, we better hurry. First hundred people get a new scarf. <laughs> but Dad... As long as you are my son, you are not going to the scarf museum. <laughs> Jake's right. I am cool. Did you see that guy's face? He didn't want to race me. It was a school bus, Mom. I had a kid with me, too. Didn't make me a chicken. Oh, wait a second. It was closer to the garage. Be careful, Mom. 
Stop telling me to be careful. Ooh. Please tell me I hit you. <laughs> How bad is it? Oh, I don't think it even made it. Oh, good Lord, there it is. Oh, no. <laughs> what are we going to do? We? We weren't driving. You were driving. Oh, no. You were my accomplice. Yeah, when we were on the road, but when we're standing on the driveway, I'm just an eyewitness. She did it, officer. <laughs> you distracted me. If you hadn't taken the trash out, those trash cans wouldn't have been there. You told me to. And you did it? What's up with that? <laughs> Fine, blame the teenage daughter. No, I'm the adult. I was driving, I'll take responsibility. Maybe you don't even have to tell them. Yes, I have to, it's the right thing to do. Is it really? Think about it, Mom. Van loves that this car was in perfect condition and now that there's a scratch on it, that love will be tainted. Tainted love. They've written songs about it. <laughs> been stalling Van for an hour. He wanted to go out to drive, but I told him he had to clean the attic. Have you found a body shop yet? Yeah, Hank Bender the Auto Mender. Guaranteed to fix your fender in under an hour. Which didn't rhyme, but it's good time. <laughs> you can have it done by five. <laughs> Let's go. Where's the keys? Where's the car? Well, wherever they are, I bet they're together. <laughs> if the car's not out there, then he must be out driving it. I'm not out driving. Van. Oh, I thought you were up cleaning the attic. Yeah, Mrs. H. What's the rush with the attic all of a sudden? Well, Van, if, if the stuff that I stored away and forgot about it is dirty, then why would I bother keeping it? <laughs> so, where's your car? Well, I let Barbara Jean bar. Barbara Jean? I thought you had a rule nobody could drive your car. Oh, well, there's no rule. You just need to sign the Rhonda Pledge. It's a simple six-page document. And you know why she signed it? Because she gets it. Gets what? About a week ago, Rhonda and I spotted each other across a crowded used car lot and made a very special connection. And yet everybody has been really critical, especially you and Cheyenne. Sorry, we didn't know Rhonda could hear. Oh, we hear. <laughs> the comments, the looks of scorn, we hear them and they hurt. You hear the looks of scorn? I heard that one! Van! Reba! Van! Oh, thanks a million for letting me borrow Rhonda. No thanks necessary, Barbara Jean. See page four of the pledge. Well, I'm gonna go for a spin. Oh, wait! Van, did you, um, vacuum the attic? Mrs. Ace, did I vacuum the attic? Yeah. <laughs> did I vacuum the attic? <laughs> oh, I put a huge scratch on Van's car. Where, back left? Yeah, how'd you know? Lucky guess. Oh. Oh, Reba, why me? What have I done to deserve this? It's almost like God is punishing you for stealing my mom's husband. <laughs> Kira, I think we've moved past that. Well, of course we have. I mean, me taking Brock is, is what brought us all together. <laughs> you know, it's, it's what turned us into one big happy family, right? Yeah, until you wrecked Van's car. <laughs> oh, gosh, Van is going to lose it when he finds out I wrecked his car. He really is. He gets that look where his two eyebrows merge together, and he looks like that Muppet that lives in the trash can. Barb Jean, even though I know this is totally your fault, I'm willing to help out. Now, okay. go ask Van to borrow his car again. We'll take it down to Hank Bender's auto shop, and he can have it ready by five. How do you know that? Well, it's Hank Bender. He's a legend. Oh, okay. Go, and don't mention this to anybody. Not a word. Right, right. I scratched Van's car. <laughs> You scratched Van's car? Yeah. Why did I sign that ever-loving pledge? Go ask Van for his car again. Okay, okay. All right, do I look guilty? <laughs> Not at all. Good. Good. It was me. I scratched Van's car. Whoa. What? You? Yeah, I was walking by her and she gave me one of those smug looks, so I whacked her with my purse. <laughs> On the back left? Yeah, how'd you know? Lucky guess. <laughs> Look, 
Mom, Vienna is gonna freak out on me. Okay, it doesn't matter who scratched the car. No matter who scratched the car, Barbara Jean scratched the car. Okay, okay, got it. Oh, I can't face him. Oh, my jaw hurts. Stop grinning. Okay, look, we'll take it down to the body shop. If Van comes down from the attic, distract him. All right, but hurry. At some point, we're gonna run out of shiny objects. You know, now that I look at it, I don't see how that old lady could have put that scratch here. Oh, yeah, they're cagey. Yeah. Let's get out of here, old thing. Hey! Ah! Ah! Van! <laughs> Yeah, it's me, Van. How? What are you doing? Well, it's 2.15. Every day at this time, I wipe her down with a chamois. Sweet. <laughs> what are you guys doing? Bird watching. Woodpecker. Nature's lumberjack. <laughs> Van, you, you need to go inside right now. Why? Bird watching. Look, a squirrel. <laughs> Cheyenne's got a, a surprise for you inside. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh, I love surprises. I know. Okay. Be back, honey. <sighs> Nature's lumberjack? I know. That's the beaver. I panicked. Oh. <laughs> hey, there you are. So? So? Well? Well? Uh. Uh. I think the score is tied. Should I keep my eyes closed? Um, yeah. Okay. Hold on, honey. We told him you were going to give him a surprise. Yeah, I don't have a surprise. Well, then make up something. <laughs> Ta da! Oh my gosh! <laughs> Tissues? This is, this is my big surprise. Uh, is there something underneath there? Is there something under it's for your car. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's it. Yeah, for your car. Uh, remember the other day when we were driving and you and, and you sneezed and you didn't have a tissue? Ta da! <laughs> yeah, it's a great gift. Yeah. You, know, you always see those people driving having nose trouble. Yeah. Uh, what a better world it would be if everybody had a tissue when they needed it. Well, yeah. <laughs> Achoo! Oh, oh, uh -huh. hey. Yay! <laughs> hey, Van, guess what I just saw? Not now, okay, buddy? I'd be in a bad mood, too, if there was a huge scratch on my car. What? There's a huge scrape on your car. Show me. Maybe he's okay with it. <laughs> How could you? You're the one who scratched his car? Okay, all right. I have something to say. Kira and I went to the Scarf Museum, which is not as exciting as it sounds. Yeah, well, I was just about to say that's the original paint job, which means that it's old paint, which can't be very expensive, so how's ten bucks? Ten bucks? Ten bucks stinks! Man, calm down. It's no big deal. No big deal? Mrs. H, no big deal. What if somebody borrowed your... What is something you love? Peanut butter. Well, there you go. What if somebody borrowed your peanut butter? You threw me off by saying peanut butter. And I know you know I use my fingers. Van, oh. Van, we will pay whatever it takes to get your car fixed. Up to ten bucks. Barbara Jean, who's going to repair the scratch in my soul? Because you put that scratch there. And the worst part is you signed the Rhonda Pledge. I want to hear it. Say it with me. I, I hereby, hereby promise to um, uphold sanctity. Say it. I didn't read it. I just skimmed it. Well, you should never sign anything without reading it. Man, stop torturing the woman. The truth is... It was me. I scratched Rhonda with my purse. And I'm glad I did it. You did it? Mm-hmm. 
My own flesh and blood by marriage? <laughs> yeah, and, and you were just gonna let me take the blame? Oh, Rhonda was right about you. <laughs> jealous, okay? Van talks about this car like it is another woman. Okay, it, it's driving me nuts. It's just a stupid car. Whoa, 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 whoa. Easy, honey. That's the man's car you're talking about. <laughs> I shall never trust you or forgive you again. Shall? Mm-hmm. Shall? Since when do you say shall, you big jerk? <laughs> all right, all right, everybody just calm down. This is going far enough. I'm a jerk. I got a scratch in my car, and I'm a jerk. Well, I think anybody who puts the scratch there with her purse shall be a jerk. Stop saying shall. Shall, 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 shall. <laughs> who are you, Cheyenne? I mean, what else don't I know about you? Oh, well, you obviously don't know that I won't take a back seat to your car. That's very confusing. You know what I mean? No, I don't. Oh, come on, Van, lay off. Your wife skimmed my pledge. Hey. Six pages? Single space? Oh, come on. Rhonda is tearing us apart. How could you hear oh, you? Oh, you know, 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 I did it. I scratched your car. Not you, not you, not you. Me! I don't believe you. Yeah. <laughs> you too. I've been sneaking out your car. I've been lying to everybody. I'm the bad one. Kira was there. Ask her. Kira, is it true? It's true. And there is no scarf museum. What? <laughs> and even if there was, no. <laughs> You know, when I stepped on the gas pedal and that engine roared, it spoke to me. It said, drive me, you sexy redhead. It was you. No way. She's too responsible. That's why I did it. You all see me as this responsible, sensible person that would never do anything dangerous, wild, or fun. Well, guess what? I'm not beige. There's a side of me that has a need for speed. <laughs> Reba? Oh, yeah. Side of me that needs to burn rubber. You burned Rhonda's rubber? Uh, yeah. You put that baby into gear, crank up the stereo, forget all your troubles, and show that punk in a Camaro a thing or two. Mom? Wow. Reba? I shall never look at you the same way again. I'm sorry I dinged your car. But I get it now. Rhonda and me, well, we're just two bad girls looking for trouble. <laughs> now, if you'll excuse me, I have to go bake brownies for Jake's field trip. <laughs> Since when does Mom wear a scarf when she bakes? Never. Where are my keys? Mrs. H, you have to sign the pledge! <laughs> Oh, you should have seen me. I hit 10 free throws in a row. I was like, one, <laughs> two, three. You can tell me about the next eight after you take a shower, Stinky. Hi, hi, hi. Guess who got fan mail? Is it me? Why would you get fan mail? People like me. Oh, wow, look at you, you big stud. Stud? Well, according to this young lady, I'm like a song of Sparrow. Familiar yet different and wonderful each time it's heard. <laughs> Should I be jealous? I wouldn't worry. She doesn't get out of prison for another eight to ten years. Please, no, please. Nope. Please. Well, okay. Really? No. <laughs> Mom. This is so unfair. I never get to see Scott because of your stupid rule that we have to be with a group. Haha, <laughs> look. You're 14, he's 17. If you round that off, you're 10, he's 20. Sorry. <laughs> this is all your fault, you know. How is this my fault? Because they trusted you and look what happened. Oh, give me a break, Carrie. You're 14. I didn't get pregnant until I was 17. <laughs> you're right. Honor roll, straight A's. I brought this on myself. <laughs> well, we'll be your group. 
What? Yeah, Van and I will go out with you and Scott, it'll be fun. For who? <laughs> oh, come on, Kara. We never get to hang out together. Let's not ruin that. <laughs> Why not? Van and I are cool. No, your parents, which makes you, by definition, not cool. Not cool? Well, a certain young lady in cell block C would disagree. <laughs> And besides, having a baby does not automatically make you a parent. Hey, Reba. Hey, Barbara Jean. Kira's in the kitchen. Oh, I didn't come to get Kira. I came to talk to you. Ah, oh, it's too bad. You just missed me. I need to ask you a question that's a bit... awkward. <laughs> Do you have to? Don't we already have enough uncomfortable moments between us? Besides, I have a headache, and I'm pretty sure it's from the last time we spoke. How did Brock act when he and I were sneaking around behind your back? When, who, what, what? I think Brock's having an affair. And just like that, my headache's gone. had an affair and you figure I'm the one to come talk to about this? Well, I don't know anyone else he's cheated on. <laughs> and just like that, the headache's back. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I know this is just terrible, but it's driving me crazy. Lately, we have been fighting a lot, and, and now he's being all secretive. See, that's the problem with marrying the guy you had an affair with. It destroys the trust. <laughs> I'm sure there's a perfectly good explanation for whatever he's done. I don't know. You know, he, he hasn't been at the golf course a couple of times when I've tried to reach him. He probably was. He just didn't want you to bother him. Next. The other day, he was on the phone, and when I came in the room, he hung up. <laughs> As if the call were over? Next. He's written a bunch of checks out to cash. How much cash? A couple thousand. Get a lawyer. <laughs> situation for me. <laughs> this is the worst feeling I have ever had. Oh, Reba, I'm so sorry if I ever made you feel the way I feel right now. Look, don't think of it as Brock getting a mistress. Think of it as us getting a new girl for our club. <laughs> You can't go on like this. You have to find out if he's cheating. Yeah, I, I just can't believe it. You expect it from other men, but not Brock. <laughs> just ask him. I can't, Reba. Next to having an affair, accusing somebody of doing it is the best way to break up a marriage. Well, I don't know what else to tell you. You could ask him. <laughs> no. He would understand it if you don't trust him. No. No, please, no way. Reba. No, 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 please, no. please, please. No. Please, no. please. <laughs> oh, all right. Man, you're way better at that than Kira is. <laughs> Hey guys, I have to go over to Brock and Barbara Jean's house. Don't be surprised if I come back drunk. Wait. <laughs> Hold on. Wait, you're you're leaving? Who's gonna watch Elizabeth? Oh my gosh! 
that was close. Yeah. I almost left her alone in the house with her parents. <laughs> They all want grandchildren, but they just don't think about the consequences. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Kara. I started to get worried. Where's Scott? I don't know. He was supposed to come over half an hour ago. What did you call him? It's no big deal. He must have gotten hung up somewhere. We'll just go out another time. Oh, you poor thing. You know, you shouldn't be home alone tonight. Why don't you watch Elizabeth and Shine and I will go out? <laughs> Dan. What? I said you poor thing. It's okay, we'll wait on him. We've got some time before Mom comes back anyway. Oh, you know, I just remembered I did talk to him and he had a game tonight. Kira, what's going on? Nothing. Kira, I don't want to talk about it with you. Shine. <laughs> Do you want to talk about it with me? Sure. Why don't you go make us some tea and I'll be in in a minute. Okay. <laughs> really wrong. Cheyenne, I want to go home. No, not until you tell me what's going on. Fine, I'll go out the back. Kira? Where's the tea? I can only find the salt. <laughs> Kira. Fine. He dumped me. Are you happy? He what? Yeah, Scott just broke up with me. Oh. <laughs> Pretty bride. <laughs> Anyone have any objections now? Hey, <laughs> <laughs> <I> Mark G. <laughs> hey, how you doing? Oh, super good. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm, I'm just trying to look on the positive side. You know, the good thing about your husband cheating on you is my house has never been cleaner. <laughs> Oh, I won't eat that. They're for Brock. Oh, okay. Go <laughs> in it. Look, wouldn't you rather talk to Brock about uh, him having an affair and just call me about it later? No, no, no. No, I. No, I. Yeah. I can't even look at him without thinking about him in the arms of another. <laughs> Margie, breathe, breathe, breathe. Okay, fine, I'll ask you. Calm down. Breathe. Happy thoughts. Yeah, happy thoughts. Beanie babies. Beanie babies. Hey, honey, I'm back. Hey, Reba, how's it going? Don't you want to know what that was about? Not really. How good could it be? <laughs> so what are you doing over here? Well, Barbara Jean and I were going to do something, but now I guess I'm off the hook. <laughs> so do you know why she keeps doing that? Me? Nope. <laughs> Too bad. This is really annoying. Annoying? You think she's annoying? Your wife is in there heap, heaping, and you have the nerve! Are you having an affair? What? An affair. You know that thing where you periodically ruin everybody's lives because you still want to feel 17? Why would you ask me that? Because that's why your wife is so upset, you moron. And because God does have a sense of humor, she comes running to me. I'm not having an affair, okay? Oh, yeah, and why am I supposed to believe you? Well, because I'm not dumb enough to make the same mistake twice. Oh, come on. You make the same mistake twice, you're just getting warmed up. <laughs> All right, look. If I tell you what's going on, will you promise to keep it a secret? Yeah, all right. What is it? Okay. I gotta tell you, it's not an easy thing for me to admit. It's rude to talk and eat. Go on. <laughs> anyway, I've been thinking about my life a lot lately. I mean, I've got this terrific wife, great kids. 
everything I ever dreamed of, and I'm miserable. It's like, I've got it all, Reva, and, and I'm just not happy. It's like I've lost the ability to feel joy. So, <laughs> so I went and saw a therapist. She told me that I'm clinically depressed. Really? Yeah. She put me on antidepressants. So that's what this is all about? Yeah. So why didn't you tell Barbara Jean? You scared her to death. Because I don't want her to know. Are you serious? You'd rather her think you're having an affair than being on medication? Well, one of them has a stigma. Brock! No. <laughs> it makes me feel weak. Do you have any idea how humiliating this is for me? I don't want her to know. No. What don't you want me to know? That I'm having an affair. <laughs> Cheating on me? <laughs> oh, Brock, tell her the truth. I hate that sound. I'm seeing a therapist. Who is she? What's the trans name? I'm seeing her professionally. You're paying for it? Oh. Barbara Jean, he's not cheating on you. He's in therapy. Therapy? Why? Well... There are a lot of things that I've been burying deep for a long time that I needed to confront. You're gay. <laughs> I knew you were too good looking. He's not gay, he's not even that good looking. He's clinically depressed. No, he's not. Actually, I am, and the last 10 minutes haven't helped it. No, no, I'm sorry. If my husband was depressed, I think I'd know about it. Well, he is. And he's taking antidepressants. Oh, you'd love that, wouldn't you, Reba? What are you talking about? He's depressed. He's been that way for a while now. So when he ran off with me, it's because he had a mental disease. <laughs> that's not a mental disease. That's just bad taste. Oh, I think this is getting a little out of hand. Oh, how would you know, you pill popper? <laughs> hey, those pills make me feel better. You don't need happy pills. You only need me. I will make you happy. Barbara Jean, he needs your support right now. He needs to get a grip. You wanted to sell your dental practice, I didn't make a peep. You wanted to become a professional golfer, I went along. But I will not let you take pills that make you a different person. I will not let you say that our marriage was a mistake. Barbara Jean. No! And if you tell him any different, you are no longer welcome here. I don't ever want to see or talk to you again. Maybe we should have gone with the gay thing. <laughs> Wait, did you have a fight? Was he seeing someone else? Was he pressuring you, Kara? I don't remember. I was high. He was. What is wrong with boys? What happened to morals? You know what it is? You know what it is? MTV. You see, this is exactly why 14-year-olds should not date 17-year-olds. Why? Because you shouldn't get pregnant until you're 17? Well, I don't even recommend it then. <laughs> And it's not like 14-year-old boys don't put on pressure, too. Yeah, but they're really bad at it. <laughs> it doesn't matter how old anyone is. I'm not going to do something I'm not ready for. Believe me, I'm not going to make the same mistakes you did. Excuse me? Oh, come on, Cheyenne. Living with you two is like living in a public service announcement. <laughs> oh. Well, thank you very much. I'm proud to be the older sister you never want to be. You didn't have to have a baby to make me feel that way. You know, what was I thinking? I don't even know why I try and even be nice to you. Do you even have any feelings? Okay, okay, can everybody please calm down and stop acting like girls? <laughs> now, Cheyenne, Kira is lashing out at you because her boyfriend just dumped her and she can't lash out at him. And Kira, Cheyenne has been through a lot, okay? And she doesn't have to have it repeatedly thrown back in her face. She's a teenage mother. Get over it! <laughs> 
Now, both of you say something nice to each other. You didn't dress that badly for your date. You didn't have a second baby. Nicer. <sighs> Fine. Well, you used to be this superficial princess who only cared about how she looked and how popular she was. Now you worry about your husband and your baby and your little sister. Still look good though, right? <laughs> You took a hard road, Cheyenne, but it made you a better person. Well, I think you're taking a hard road, Kira, and it's gonna make you a better person. They're all hard roads. <laughs> the sucky thing is, I really did like him. I know. No, what are we doing standing around here? We're not gonna let that idiot ruin our Saturday night. You got that right. What do you say we go out and have some fun? Yes! All right. right. Woohoo! All right. <laughs> ben? Huh? You're watching Elizabeth. Of course I am. Yeah. <laughs> this is great, Mom. You never let me have cookies this late at night. Well, it's not the only special thing you get tonight. Look. What's this? This is deodorant. It's something you use when you get a little older and your body starts to mature. Is it because I smell? Yes. Yes, it is. Cool! Nah. Hey, guys. Listen, buddy, can I, can I get a second with your mom? Okay, Dad. Guess what? I got my own deodorant. Great. Rub some of that on your feet. <laughs> Listen, I want to thank you for your support earlier. It meant a lot. Yeah. You're flying high on your happy pills, aren't you? <laughs> uh, no. In fact, I'm, I'm thinking maybe I'm going to stop taking those antidepressants. What? Yeah, you know, it's like Barbara Jean says. I mean, everybody goes through tough times. You just have to learn how to deal with it. Besides, I'm not even sure I like my therapist. You know, everything I say to her, she says, what are you, nuts? <laughs> You're stopping them because Barbara Jean wants you to. That's not the only reason. You know, I'm not even sure those pills are working. Brock, you gotta give them time. It can take up to two weeks, and you already said that they're making you feel better. Yeah, well, maybe it's not the pills. Maybe I'm starting to feel better on my own. It doesn't work that way. You've got a chemical imbalance. I don't know the medical term for it, but your brain is all wacko. <laughs> oh, really? And how would you know? What made you an expert on antidepressants all of a sudden? Because I've been on them. What? Right after we broke up for about six months. Well, why didn't you tell me? Oh, I don't know. Somehow I just felt we weren't that close. <laughs> it's not easy to admit you need help. Especially for men. And me. <laughs> but you can't fix the problem by just wishing it away. Yeah. That's what my therapist said. Look, if you don't think the pills are doing any good for you, then stop. But this is not just about your wife. It's about your kids and your friends and everybody else in your life. Oh, man. Barbara Jean's going to be really unhappy about this. Yeah, I know. And when she finds out that I'm for it, she's never going to speak to me again. Don't worry, Reeve. I'll keep you out of it. What are you, nuts? <laughs> Why should you be the only one that's happy? <laughs>
Mm-hmm. <laughs>